in the appendix, you can see some of the uh, experimental results, which I believe explains very well about the scattering diffraction and the diffusion as well. So let us <coughs> see the, the experimental uh, 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 case first. Okay, if you see the upper the picture, two pictures, uh, you can see that the, the waves after this uh, uh, impedance con uh, discontinuity in space, okay, this impedance discontinuity has a rather thinner, thinner width compared with this uh, obstacles, for example. Okay, and we emitted the <laughs> the wave that had uh, same uh, uh, wavelengths. And what you can see over here, you can see that the wave is diffracted, right? Right, due to the impedance mismatch over here. But the way the amount of diffraction due to the, this type of spatial distribution of impedance mismatch is different, and this case has more, more uh, uh, larger area of shadow zone, which means that the the zone where we cannot hear sound. Okay. This kind of observation is, can be readily envisaged or understood by, by, you know, thinking about some of the extreme cases. For example, if you have a, uh, the, uh, uh, obstacle whose uh, width is, is, is very large, then, If the width is very large compared with this case, then the wave will scatter over here and then travel and then diffract it. Right? In this case, wavelength is larger than compared with this obstacle. In this case, number of diffracted, I mean, amount of diffracted wave is more than the amount of diffracted wave over here. So that means that the, the, depending on the type of impedance mismatch in space, the amount of diffraction can be varied. Okay, this, this is the another case. Okay, I have obstacle over here, and this is the sort of time, the snapshot, the time at a certain time, and 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 the time that that is passed like a delta T. And this is 2 delta T. Okay? As you can see here, in the beginning, there is a sound wave scattered due to the, uh, due to the uh, existence of uh, impedance mismatch. Okay? And then this wave is propagating at the back side of the uh, obstacle and then propagate again and then meet those two waves again at the center of the uh, scatter, right? But what if the wavelength is very short compared with this obstacle? Then the amount of a scattered wave over here will be smaller, right? And it, 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 it and then it is diffracted, but it will decay, right? And it cannot meet over here. So actually the key parameter is the la wavelength lambda and the associated frequency and the geometrical shape of the uh, scatter or the obstacles. So our job is to find out what is the relation between geometrical property and the wavelengths, right, and the frequency that determines the characteristics of scattering and the diffraction. 
In fact, what we found for the case when we have a, for example, the scattered that has a nominal diameter A, then the velocity component, in other words, the velocity component in normal direction to the scatter has two components, right? One component is something related with cosine theta, and the other component is something related with, with cosine squared theta. And that one has a phase of J. Right? If I write uh, more precisely, then that is V uh, over rho J of C, and I have minus and cosine theta, and then I have minus a, b, rho zero c, and then cosine square theta. That is the amplitude of the, uh, uh, the vibration of the scatterer. In fact, we assume that the, the vibration of the scatterer, small u n, is u n exponential minus j omega t. This concept comes from the realization that when we have a scatterer, when we have an instant wave that we call the PI, then due to impedance mismatch, we have a scattered wave, so we can write the total pressure field is PI plus PSC. In other words, total pressure field will be composed by instant pressure field as well as a scattered pressure field. Okay? The boundary condition over here is the, the, the velocity on this surface has to be zero. Therefore, I can say PT is equal to zero on S0. Okay, that is boundary condition. This boundary condition gives me that gradient PSC has to be equal to minus PI, and we know PI, therefore we can get it. The uh, scattered pressure field, and that comes out to give us the scattered field is due to the vibration of the scatter. In other words, the scattering is induced by the sort of radiation of the uh, of the scatter. Right? So scattering phenomena is 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 somehow similar with the radiation phenomena. Okay, that's what we learned in the last lecture. And this term means that this scatter radiates the sound as if it is dipole or trampoline sphere. And this represents breathing sphere. Okay? Right. Okay. Now, what we can see uh, another Okay. So in this case, for example, one instant wave coming in, because of this kind of phenomena, the wave will be composed by two parts. One is due to the oscillation of this obstacle into space, radiation, and the plus instant wave. Therefore, what you can see here, the small wave over here, that can be regarded as the wave that is reflected from this surface. Right? 